Hey, back to our YouTube Cook RT again. For this series, though, I'm going to talk about our transistor. That's this one of very, very important electronic devices. Many uh, of you are probably familiar you know, with uh, transistor already in the term of or they use that for audio circuit for to amplify to get higher power so uh, you could get uh, a very good sound system some of them are used for digital circuits that you can find in uh, computers and in uh, many kind of uh, digital circuit applications S and uh, for this uh, introduction to transistor, I'm gonna skip that one. I'm just like refresh a little bit about uh, what the transistor you know doing. And this one is show uh, the symbol of uh, NP uh, NPN junction transistor, or call it's the BJT. Bipolar junction transistor. Is the for BJT we uh, know that they have like two different types. One is NPN and the other one is PNP. And uh, for uh, sometimes they call like BJT is just uh, the PN junction with the back to back uh, connection. So this one to be P and this is one to be N. And for the basic electronic series two, or I already mentioned about how a diode works, so you may want to go back and you know take a look at that again. So it's just become a back-to-back -back, um, p junction to or make bipolar junction transistor. And uh, what does the transistor do? Uh, basically, uh, you already know that transistor it simply works just like a switch, and in this case, it's become a uh, electrical switch. That means you need to uh, bias, you know, a transistor to make it to turn on or off. That's the different than the switch that you want to turn on the light in your house. That's what we call uh, you need to push. And that's what we call a mechanical switch. And uh, from uh, the label here, you have uh, well the base, the collector, and the emitter. And in general, you know that for NPN transistor, to be able to turn on the transistor here, you need to uh, uh, keep the voltage different between uh, B and E equal or greater than uh, 0 0.64 for, for silicon uh, transistor and sometimes people use 0 0.7 volt but in general it seems uh, to be uh, this kind of range okay so but in uh, the YouTube here I'm gonna keep it just like uh, 0 0.64 for the voltage difference between base and emitter to be able to turn on the transistor. Now uh, as the the transistor can uh, do the current amplification and uh, in general you can see that when you have the IC or the oh sorry the base col uh, the base current is coming in here you can get your IC uh, by uh, equal to uh, beta multiplied by IB when uh, beta is the current gain. Typically, it's just about 100, or you know, in uh, close to this number. And uh, for this one, I show you the red line here, see uh, to show you the direction of the current flow for NPN transistor. The best current going to flow from the base to the emitter, 
and for the collector current it's going to flow from the collector to the emitter but for PNP transistor is going to work on the opposite way around so uh, your base current going to flow from emitter to the base and your collector current going to flow from uh, emitter to collector and also you know uh, the relation between uh, the emitter current equal to what? equal to IC plus IB correct? and uh, you know uh, IC is equal to uh, beta IB sometimes we can write this one as the IC represent by beta IB so you end up with uh, beta plus one and then multiply by IB that's equal to uh, IE now uh, let's take a look at the simplest uh, circuit of a transistor and it's very useful circuit in this case is the transistor as a switch uh, the picture here or the circuit here show you how to connect you know um, transistor the voltage source and the device in this case is the light bulb okay. and it's rated 10 volt 0 0.1 amps and you have open switch here you have a resistor 1.0 k ohms connect to uh, the base of the NPN transistor now take a look at the when the switch is closed and since the emitter is connected to the ground so VE here is zero and then uh, when you know that when you want to turn on the transistor here yeah, you need uh, the voltage different between the base and the emitter to be at least 0 0.6 volt and since the, this one connected to uh, the supply voltage 10 volt and this one always higher than uh, VE and the transistor is always on when you close the switch here you will have uh, the current flowing to the circuit so what about VE here equal to 0 what uh, would VB be? it's become 0 by 6 correct? Uh, to turn on the transistor so from here you can calculate the current flowing through uh, 1.0 k ohms resistor simply become our uh, 10 volt minus 0 0.6 and divided by 1.0 k ohms which is just right here okay so a uh, 10 volt minus 0 0.6 give you uh, 9.4 volt and you can calculate for the base current to be your uh, 9, 9.5 volt over 1.0 k ohms and that's give you a uh, 9.4 milliamps but this one it doesn't make sense you know why because if you take a look at the lamp which rated uh, voltage 10 volt and the current is 0 0.1 amp or equal to 100 milliamp since I mentioned earlier here I see equal to beta IB and beta is just about 100 you take compare to uh, this number IC and IB and if you multiply uh, IB with beta in this case let's put a uh, 100 you're going to end up what 900 um, this is milli right so it's going to be not only 940 but you're yeah sorry uh, 940 milliamp so you see this IB already higher than IC that's why it doesn't make sense and you even multiply by 100 to get there to better to get IC and you know you compare this number it's not equal at all 
so uh, why I mentioned about our this one here because the in fact you're supposed to make uh, your IB um, equal to IC over beta so what you can do you have to uh, reduce your the base current to be lower than that just make it like perfect match so uh, the way you uh, reduce the best current you uh, can do by uh, simply connect another resistor to the base so you have less current to the base here okay all right uh, I just point this out and I will explain more later on because this is just the introduction to transistor I want I don't want you to go too deep or but um, just point out to you that even you work out on a transistor it seems to be simple but when you connect you know electronic devices together into circuit you have to think and everything have to be reasonable and you can convince people that why the circuit look like this one so uh, parameters that get in full into the circuit they simply become I current and the voltage you know this is the main parameter that you need to consider now our take a look at the when talking about a transistor as a switch there's some rules you know that uh, you need to consider so as I mentioned before you need to choose the right base resistor uh, make sure you have the proper the base current to bias the transistor number two if the V-load swing below the ground use a diode in series with uh, the collector that's the connect in the re reverse direction to ground to prevent actually this is should be uh, the base to uh, the collector conduction okay in case you have V out here and you have the level just below the ground you don't want the negative signal to show up at the output what you can do you just connect the diode you know, uh, to the collector in the reverse direction to the ground so just thinking about uh, you have the positive uh, 10 volt right here and when you connect to the diode just thinking about uh, the forward bias when you have the forward bias that means this one you need the higher voltage compared to 10 volt and you have the diodes on right? but whenever you have uh, the voltage at the anode of your diode uh, less than what to be this one turn on you need the voltage different to be your 0 0.6 so this one have like 9.4 volt okay whenever you have the voltage you know below 9.4 volt the diode is just off so it's cut you know uh, op make th this one is to be your open circuit and this is your V out this is uh, V E and this one here the voltage different between the base and the collect uh, the emitter still becomes 0 0.6 when you have the signal is coming in and if you don't want the negative uh, signal you simply connect uh, the diode you know, at the collector now are for inductive loads okay this is interesting when you have a uh, the closed circuit you have the voltage and you have current flowing through uh, the inductor for example if you don't have uh, your diode here it's going to make problem with the transistor um, take a look why because the when you have an open circuit the inductance the inductors um, 
is associated with uh, the voltage drop across inductor is equal to L di by dt and suddenly you change the i to be uh, a big number right because when you have like closed switch you have the current flowing through uh, the inductor but when you open the circuit your current is just disappear or equal to zero so this term is very large in the short time right when you close and open you know your switch so vl is very large and you take a look at this one if you have the large VL right here, it's gonna have like the cause the transistor have for the negative uh, bias voltage, and if the negative bias voltage is much is much much less than uh, the breakdown voltage, you're in trouble your transistor going to break down so what you can do is you are connect the diode in parallel with the inductor so what happens is that when uh, you have the high for example for this one is 10 volt okay and you have the voltage here a large voltage so what happened? Okay, let's put it this way to make it simple. And uh, if you have uh, the smaller voltage here, your this become uh, not a reverse by us, but your diode is it's not on, right? So this become open circuit. So you still have a. Uh, the current flowing to the inductor so it's in the mo normal condition but then whenever you have the voltage you know at this point to be very large for example large enough to turn on the diode for example it's, like it's greater than 10.6 uh, correct this cause the diode turn on when the diode turn on it just simply this one the voltage drop around here to be 0 0.6 and you have uh, just uh, like back to be uh, the normal condition it's just like the bypass you know um, the voltage on this direction here so the transistor is still working okay it's not gonna have problem with the back drive okay now our take a look at transistor as emitter follo follower the way to connect the circuit just look like this picture here okay uh, you have the incoming to the base and uh, you have a resistor at uh, emitter and this is your V out and the collector con direct uh, connected to uh, supply voltage 10 volt and uh, here show no uh, collector resistor let's analyze the circuit um, for V out here and this is V in so you know when your transistor is on the voltage different between the base and the collector the emitter is 0 0.6 so uh, you can write VB minus VE equal to 0 0.6 and you end up with uh, VE just about our VB minus 0 0.6 volt this is uh, your output here and V in of course has to be greater or equal than 0 0.6 volt in uh, this emitter follower you know that the input impedance much much greater than output impedance which in, uh, in this case is the output impedance is R okay I will uh, prove that to you uh, soon so uh, just take a look at this one here when you have input impedance much much greater than output impedance 
This means you have uh, less input power required to drive a given load, right? Why less input power required? Because when you have the input impedance uh, become a large number, you have a low current. So uh, for the power equal to I square R, when you have the factor of I square. So I square R, I is dominate R, that's give you power. So that's why uh, you just require input uh, lower input power or even small input power and give you uh, the output impedance here when you have the output impedance uh, less than uh, input impedance you are end up with uh, a very very high current sorry um, you have a uh, I mean the circuit here is going to amplify you with uh, this is IB right this and this is IE and IE of course is is greater than IB and uh, what I mentioned here is that let's say that for the input you require um, small power to drive the sun sister and what you get at the output is that you have the high, much higher output power, for example, to drive your speakers. And uh, for this one, the benefit is that emitter followers is give you the current gain, not a voltage, voltage gain or the power gain. This is the what the transistor can do. Uh, when a uh, circuit with a uh, capacitor, inductor, or resistor, you know, you cannot do the current gain. That's why a transistor is very important. Um, let's analyze the circuit above. When you are just thinking about uh, the variation of the emitter voltage and the variation of the base voltage they are equal. Why? Because linearity. We're not talking about VE and VB, but we're talking about the variation of how much the emitter voltage change and how much the best voltage change. So they are will affect you know to the same amount. Take a look at the circuit here. You want to calculate IE IE simply equal to our V out over R load, right? So if you want to find the variation of the current, because your, your RE is direct proportional to the base current or, or emitter current, um, which is the emitter, the very when you want to do uh, the variation, you put delta IE, so it's equal to delta VE over R. But since the VE delta VE equal to delta VB you can uh, put delta VB right here for just to point out this is the direct related to uh, the input voltage which is come into the base here and uh, from the relation IB plus IC equal to IE and uh, IC equal to HFE or the gain multiplied by the base current you are E equal to uh, IB multiplied by 1 plus HFF and if you think about delta IB it's this one is going to be delta IE or delta IB equal to delta IE over 1 over HFE and I will show what will you get in the next page Well, when you have our data IB equal to data RE over HFE plus 1, and uh, this is the current variation at the base, and this is the current variation at the emitter or at the output, 
enter your substitute because they're from the previous page you know delta IE equal to or delta VB over R right we want to write delta RE in the term uh, input uh, voltage at the base so you find the relation that you have delta IB here you have delta VB here so or what is delta VB over the delta RE this is the at the input right so our VB over IB simply give you R correct so this R here sorry I shouldn't write R here so this R here is become the input impedance uh, 1 over R multiplied by HFE plus 1 so in this case R I in is going to be much much less than R R at the output. But for if R small, it's going to have the opposite result. Your R in is going to be large. So it depends on what condition you have in the circuit. And uh, for the complex impedance, you can do the same thing. Simply. Uh, change your R I in become our Z I in and then uh, you have the relation with the complex impedance Z I in equal to or Z out multiplied by HFE plus 1 Uh, because the your Z out equal to or Z of the source divided by HFE plus 1 now let's take a look at another circuit uh, this is for the follower circuit design emitter follower, follower circuit design even have the Vsauce to be uh, 15 volt, VB equal to 5 volt, and I load max to be 25 milliamps. Let's design the circuit. Well, this is your complete circuit. You want VB to be a 5 volt when you have the source voltage uh, 15 volt. What you can do is just do uh, another circuit as the voltage divider. So VB equal to uh, 15 multiplied by R2 over R1 plus R2 because they are in series and you want this one to be 5 you can find R1 and R2 choose you know, your resistor as you want but you make sure the ratio here has to be what 1 over 3 right so 3 divided by 15 you get 5 volt and now look at the transistor since you want the iLoad max to be 25 milliamps so you want the current here to be 25 milliamps and this is you have input on the base voltage is 5 volt so your emitter voltage here has to be 4.4 volt because you have voltage drop you know across um, the base and emitter junction 0 0.6 volt so what you can do you can find R simply uh, divide 4.4 volt the output voltage by the current of the load that you want and that's become the I load max and you have R become uh, 176 ohms okay so uh, just give you uh, the rough idea about how to design the circuit and uh, for the emitter follower circuit now let's anal analyze another type of circuit here it's still we talk still talking about emitter follower you have the source voltage 10 volt connect to the collector of the NPN transistor you have the in 
and you have uh, the R 1.0 K ohms at the emitter and this one connected to a negative 10 volt and this is your load it's come 1.0 K ohms same as the the RE or emitter resistance resistor here 1.0 K ohms just take a look at the V out here it's got to be a uh, much or equal to negative 5 volt on the negative uh, voltage otherwise uh, transistor will cut off okay so uh, what happened is that you V out even you have V in to be negative because here we're going to talk about a sinusoidal wave with the blue line here. Okay. So it's have both positive and negative uh, voltage. Now uh, you take a look at the transistor. Let's consider the V out. It has to be a much is greater or equal to negative 5 volt let's put V out to be 5 volt so your V in can go to a uh, minimum let's say uh, uh, negative you can put this to be a uh, negative 4.4 volt because the different voltage between the, the base and the emitter for the case of NPN transistor have to be 0 0.6 so when you have negative 4.4 here, uh, you will be out here, uh, negative 5 volt. So the difference become uh, 0 0.6, right? Because you uh, bring uh, negative 4.4 minus um, negative 5 volt. So you have this one to be your 0 0.6 volt and you can turn the transistor on here can you go or further or lower than negative 4.4 volt? no for example you put this one to be a negative 5 volt what do you need here? you need at least negative 5.6 right? so it's beyond the limit line here because there uh, as I mentioned we out have to be equal or greater than negative 5 volt so you have your V out uh, become like clipping here and uh, the rest of portion of your sinusoidal input signal here is to uh, show up at the output okay when you have the positive uh, signal coming in just like the blue line here since this is negative you have no problem to turn on the transistor so whenever um, you are input signal hit negative pole 5 pole volt or at this point here you're going to have uh, clipping or you your output voltage it doesn't change until it's back to be uh, your input voltage is back to be uh, higher than negative 4.4 volt correct? does that make sense? and uh, let's take a look at the the red line as the output you have the difference here seem to be amplitude is decreased compared to the input voltage why? because you part of the input voltage has to drop across the base emitter junction right? 0 0.6 volt so the difference become a 0 0.6 volt here okay so uh, this is just give you a uh, rough idea about how to analyze the circuit it look like this one here it's just like a guy live 
Now, the same thing as I mentioned earlier um, in the previous circuit, when you have the inductor here, you need to connect your diode to prevent the breakdown voltage of the transistor. This is uh, do the same thing when your, your negative signal is coming. Uh, what happened? Look this one here. Uh, look at the base and emitter junction. When you have that negative signal coming here, you are the breakdown or because you apply this is the reverse bias right for the reverse bias uh, this is V this is I the breakdown voltage is going to happen at the volt negative 6 volt so you will have problem with your transistor sometimes it will exceed uh, negative 0.6 volt so you don't want that to happen. So what you need to do, you need to connect uh, the diode to the transistor in this way. And how this one going to solve the problem. Alright, let's take a look at the forward bias here. Since you connect uh, the diode to the ground, so this simply become a zero voltage. Correct? And when you have the negative voltage at the inputs coming in the diodes turn on right because you have the higher voltage compared to uh, the cathode or the voltage at the p type is higher than the voltage at the n type so your diodes turn on this means you bypass your negative voltage go to the ground so it's not going to affect the transistor at all okay so uh, you prevent your transistor from uh, the breakdown this is the I'm not sure sorry this make sure I'm not skip any pages okay here sorry now let's take a look at the emitter followers a voltage regulator another application of a transistor is just the voltage regulators okay before we use zener diodes as the voltage regulator circuits and you are understand the regulators, right? It's mean uh, you're trying to keep your output voltage a constant, it doesn't change much. It doesn't matter you have the load connected to the circuit or you don't have the load connected to the circuit. <coughs> Sorry. So let's start with the V and it's coming in uh, unregulated with repos. Okay, it's not the uh, you have some repos of your uh, supply and you have R you have a diode and you have V out that's what you expect it's become regulated so uh, your V out of course has to be uh, about the voltage drop across the Zener diode so that's why you use the Zener diode as the voltage regulator Let's take a look again how this one is work. So uh, the condition is that um, you take a look at the current flowing, you know, across R. You know that the current here is become uh, V in minus V out divided by R. Okay. And we have the the condition is that this one have to be greater than I out max when you have the load connect to the output here you're going to have another current flowing to the load and that's what we call the I out max okay 
so are when you are designed a circuit you use something since there your um r is not really constant for example it's not really 100 ohms it's ever is tolerance because sometimes like you have r become plus and minus 10 percent right which r can be either what 90 to 110 correct so the way you design the circuit you need to use the v in as the v in minimum because sometimes v in uh, is gonna sweep in there's you know some range it's not only one or certain number but that's what we call the worst case so you need to use the v in Okay, but for the power, take a look at the power at the zener. Take uh, equal to our the current, multiplying by our v across the zener, which is the you have the current to be the same here. So our v in minus v out over r, and then our you also our minus v out. Ah, uh, sorry, I out. And then uh, you multiply by uh, v zener, and for this one to find v zener max, we uh, need to consider uh, the other way around. So you need to use the v in as the v in max, and uh, r. You need to take uh, r min, uh, and then I out min. Okay. Let's take a look at example. Uh, if you want to design 10 volt regulated uh, supply and I load, uh, have the range from 0 to 100 milliamps. So, uh, and then uh, your V input is in the range of 20 volt to 25 volt, and I zener is 10 milliamps. And that's the worst case. For the worst case design, uh, you uh, pick up the equation V in minus V out over R, and you need to take the V in minimum and then uh, V out is uh, 10 volt and then you need to take uh, the I max or I out to be 100 milliamp so uh, you have like R become less than uh, 0 by K ohms and uh, for the Zener diode you need to pick up V in to be uh, V in maximum which is the 25 volt V out still become uh, 10 volt and I out minimum to be your zero because it I load is start from zero to one hundred uh, milliamp and zener diode is tenfold. So you can calculate, you know, by this one here. Now uh, as I mentioned you use the zener as the voltage regulator and you have some uh, uh limit because there you cannot adjust the out as the desired you know output voltage or even uh, make a precise value of the V out voltage and you still have a ripple at the output because the circuit does not give you a good ripple rejection or uh, voltage liquidation and uh, the other one is like you require high power zener for widely varying load currents because the somehow or you uh, need to be able to handle the dissipation at the low load current okay so that's the become uh, disadvantages so now uh, bring up our transistor for the voltage liquidator circuit uh, you have connect the circuit look like this uh, we have the V in unregulated and uh, you have R you have zero diode and you are looking for V out and also uh, at the collector you connect the collector resistance to limit I out and then uh, for uh, IB as I uh, mentioned earlier you need a small IB 
and then uh, to get your lower p zener or the power dissipation in zener diode and then you select rc uh, with the condition vrc is less than vr so our vrc is voltage across the collector resistance has to be here uh, less than uh, v across r to get a high guest load current because you want to amplify your current here you know as well okay now uh, let's take a look at the Ebers model, model for basic transistor circuit uh, as the transconductance uh, amplifier transconductance is simply become uh, the inverse of uh, your resistance for Ebers mode model you have the equation the relation between uh, the collector current and the voltage different between the base and emitter uh, just right here IC equal to AS multiplied by EVBE minus VT minus 1 this is similar to uh, the diode uh, equation and you can find uh, IC is going to uh, depend on uh, the voltage different between uh, the base and the emitter where VT is the KT over Q usually at 20 uh, degree or 209 sorry um, in Kelvin is what 273 plus 20 so it's become uh, 293 Kelvin correct and that's give you where uh, when you uh, substitute K which is the Boltzmann constant is 1.38 10 to negative 23 joule per Kelvin and temperature in Kelvin is 293 and Q is 1.6 10 to negative 19 or actually you don't have to uh, uh, plug in Q here but if you plug in Q here 1.6 to 10 negative 19 it's going to give you in the unit of uh, joule per Kelvin which is 1.38 10 to negative 23 and if I still remember if in our uh, electron volt is going to be uh, um 0.26 electron volt yeah. you can check out by yourself can so uh, this become our Ebermo's equation and uh, from this equation uh, is when you are looking for uh, IB usually we not calculate IB the electric form or any equation but we uh, start by calculating the collector current and then uh, divide by the gain or beta and just give you RB. Now I'll uh, take a look at the rule of thumb for transistor design for Ebers mode equation. You know, explain more from the Ebers mode equation. If you want to increase IC by the factor of 10, Okay, this one show you uh, what um, the different of the what is different between uh, base and emitter is going to be. So you start by your um, Ebers mole equation. I C one equal to I S exponential V B E one over V T, and then I C two equal to I S exponential V B E two over V T when I s is the leakage current and then you divide equation 2 by equation 1 so I s cancel out and uh, you want the ratio to be 10 times right and then you end up with exponential e b e 2 minus e b e 1 over v t and you apply ln both sides of equation get uh, v t ln 10 equal to v b e 2 minus v e b 1 so this is give you about 60 millivolt at room temperature I, in case you want your collector current to be 10 times of the original one or sometimes we call base current increases 60 millivolt per decade at collector current 
and you can write in a general equation from 1 and 2 you do the same thing here and then uh, you are represent IC2 by IC and I want simply IC0 you are end up with the uh, exponential of delta V over 25 so this has become 25 millivolt and you can find the ratio between the, the collected current um, and you can calculate to find what delta V is going to be now uh, for small signal impedance looking into emitter where be, uh, the base voltage is fixed um, this is the your RE going to simply become our VT over IC and uh, if you plot the and the plot between uh, VBE and I C and you know uh, you can phi R E from the slope of the plot which is actually a uh, derivative of uh, V uh, B E over I C actually I should change this one to uh, to be around so this one should be I C and this is should be a V B E sorry for my mistake now take a look at Ebermost equation. Since when VB is greater uh, than zero, you can ignore the term negative one, right? Because this one is going to be as great, much greater than one, so you ignore one. And then uh, IC over IS simply become exponential e to the power VBE over VT, and you can write VBE in the term of uh, VT. Uh, multiplied by ln IC over IS and you differentiate VBE with respect to uh, IC you end up with this term it's simple math, simple calculus and that's get you RE which is the intrinsic emitter resistance so you take a look at this one in the real circuit at emitter here it seems you have a RE in series you know at the emitter so what happens is that RE is going to uh, limit the gain of the crowded emitter because you have no RE, you know, connect at the emitter here. So what happens when you have the voltage, input voltage coming in and you have voltage coming out? The gain is supposed to be 1, but since you have the voltage drop across RE, so the voltage gain is going to be uh, less than 1. And also, uh, since you have RE here, this means your R is not simply zero. You have something in here. So uh, your output impedance is not equal to zero, but equal to uh, RE. Then uh, this is the conductance become the inverse of RE. Number three, from uh, BE equal to VT ln LIC over IS, that we derived before and because BE is the temperature dependent you can see exactly here it's become a positive temperature coefficient because VT is positive and then uh, also IS um, also depend on temperature sorry about this one here and we know that VBE decreases it's about 2.1 millivolt per degree when you have the temperature higher and then uh, your VBE drop or VBE is the inverse proportional to uh, the temperature next one is about early effect um, it's explained that VBE is not really going to be a constant but it, it will vary slightly with uh, delta VC when you have the voltage different between uh, a collector and emitter change uh, does affect VBE as well your your IC is constant this is because the if you look back at the semiconductor devices this is because of the effective base width change or you can write delta <coughs> sorry 
you can write VBE slightly, you know, change with the delta VCE. And you put the alpha here, and I put negative sign because it's decreasing. When the alpha is very small, so it's not going to affect a lot. Okay, uh, I just give you a, a fresh start about uh, another technique to connect uh, your BJT transistor or uh, BJT uh, transistor application. One thing that we uh, often heard about the current mirror, the current mirror is like to match the best emitter by asking. Okay, you have two transistor here, and you can control your current on the left side, and this give you the current source, you know, on the left side, and they just like look like twin. Or uh, you can use the monolithic uh, transistor here to be exactly the same thing together. When you control um, on the left of your circuit here, you get your IP. And IP also show up as the mirror reflect over there, so you can get uh, the current source. How the circuit work? You look at this one. You have like VCC or supply voltage, and you have a PNP transistor here. So this one 15 volt. You going to when the transistor is on, you are need at least the. Uh, the voltage different between the emitter and the base to be a 0 0.6 so at this point you're going to have the voltage to be 14.44 and if I connect our resistor 14.4k here you simply calculate you know the current IP equal to 14.4 volt over 14.4k which is equal to 1 milliamp and it's going to show up you know on the right side of the circuit that's what they call our the current mirror and uh, still they have a limitation of current mirror because if you are the early the early effect is going to come to play you know the circuit um, the problem is that I you are Output current is going to proportional to V out. Usually, as you call like voltage regulator, when you connect the load to the output, your voltage, output output voltage drop, and that means your output current also drop as well. Because the delta V B not equal to zero. Um, you take a look at this one, about uh, the early effect, you have the plot between IC and VCE. Usually this one is supposed to be uh, the flat you know, line, but when C increasing, your IC change. Or even IC change, your VCE change. That's going to affect your uh, output. This is mean uh, the collected current here. And the technique to uh, solve the problems or to improve the circuit simply by adding RE, you know, put the RE at the emitter, both side of the current mirror. Okay, and I will explore explain more in the next YouTube. This is just keep in mind. This is just the uh, introduction to uh, uh, transistor and transistor application circuit. You will see more examples.